Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Veterans across America have heard Trump's call, look what they just did for him. Military veterans, who sacrificed to serve our beautiful constitution and flag, are expressing their disgust for the NFL and their protests. That's right, y'all. Here's what the people who truly matter think, the veterans of foreign wars and the American Legion have both come out and expressed their loathing for the NFL's open disrespect for our flag. Vietnam combat veteran Keith Harmon said this, There is a time and place for civil debate, and wearing team jerseys and using sporting events to disrespect our country doesn't wash with millions of military veterans who have and continue to wear real uniforms on real battlefields around the globe. We've treated NFL players as heroes for far too long. From now on, let's honor true heroes, like Harmon, and all the other men and women who have truly served. Get this. 28 teams slash 250 players disrespected our flag this past weekend. Are you still watching? American Legion National Commander Denise H. Rahan called the protests and the protesters misguided and ungrateful. Have they not noticed, Colin Kaepernick, the first baby to disrespect our flag, still is unsigned. I'll admit, I don't know a lot about his ability as a player, but I hear he's pretty good. But, as I understand it, He's still unsigned, and being avoided like the plague. And that's what we need to do, patriots. Stand with our veterans. Avoid the disrespectful NFL like the plague. I know it'll be hard. We all love football. But this disrespect cannot be tolerated. Patriots, will you stand with our vits and president? H. T. The Daily Caller In the wee hours this morning Trump announced one thing McCain didn't want him to. Trump is not taking it easy on John McCain. After the latest Republican health care bill slipped through the cracks, President Trump has dropped this bombshell on John McCain, who refused to vote on the bill. A few of the many clips of John McCain talking about repealing and replacing O'Care, Trump said in the tweet below. My oh my has he changed complete turn from years of talk. McCain and three other senators opposed the bill this Monday night and the bill is expecting to die quickly because of it. Republicans are messing up. They can't fix anything. They can only pass the bill with two GOP votes, without any Democrat support. Senator Susan Collins, Republican Maine, has also announced this morning that he will be voting against the bill. Trump is very upset that McCain is sinking everything he does in order to get back at him. It's a sad state of affairs. Share this if you think that McCain should retire and go recover with his family. We are sorry that he is sick but he doesn't deserve to get to make the rest of the country sick because of it. Just days after Trump's Alabama speech, Bannon showed up and did the unthinkable. It's been over a month since President Donald Trump decided to cut Bannon and all of his close allies from the White House. However, Bannon has been working overtime ever since then and finally came clashing with the president in Alabama this week. Everyone by now remembers Trump's big speech in Alabama where he went after the NFL. Technically, he was there to endorse Alabama Senate candidate Luther Strange. The problem is, not all Republicans like Strange. Steve Bannon decided to throw his weight behind Republican Judge Roy Moore. Now, this is where it gets strange. No matter what Bannon does, he will forever be attached to the name of President Trump. So, in an attempt to get votes for Moore, Bannon and Breitbart declared that a vote for the judge is a vote for President Trump. Obviously, this is very confusing and just plain incorrect. President Trump made it very clear multiple times that his man is Luther Strange. I mean heck, he tweeted about Strange before bed last night. The one advantage to them splitting the endorsement like that is you now have two pro-Trump candidates, 
but only one has the president's actual endorsement while the other is just using his name. Look, we have no dog in this fight personally. But, I am curious to know what you all think. Should Bannon be using Trump's name like that or is he going too far now? Share this out after you comment and answer. Moments before Obamacare repeal vote, Senate Republicans did the most disappointing thing imaginable. This was supposed to be a big week for the Republican Party. The Graham Cassidy Obamacare repeal bill was shaping up to finally be the win that Republicans have needed since they took over Congress in January. Then it happened. As if the party was not already in enough deep doo doo with its supporters, the party did the most pitiful thing possible. They decided not to even vote out of fear of losing. Oh, and this was a big one too. You see, the rule in the Senate that allows them to win with 51 votes instead of 60 is about to expire until next year. That means that after this week, they will need eight Democrats and all Republicans just to repeal Obamacare. Of course, they try to all play coy and clever with their wording after the decision. After all, how are they supposed to explain to their constituents why they have failed every single time? For instance, Ted Cruz was one of the senators who refused to repeal Obamacare last time and he tried to spin it as progress. There's more work to be done. I mean we don't yet have 50 votes. I think we're close and we need to continue working. It looks like old Lion Ted is going back to his old habits. Maybe the reason that there were not 50 votes is that Ted won't vote for a bill written by anyone but himself, and his Obamacare repeal bill a few months ago was terrible. Clearly, these Washington elites care more about covering up their own asses than doing their job. That's why we need to get this spread to every Republican in America and hold them accountable for their failures. Trump just unleashed his best plan yet to pound North Korea where it really hurts. President Trump continues to go hard against North Korea. Past, week, efforts by husband presidents have failed to do anything to thwart Kim Jong-un, but Trump is not backing down. Tuesday, Trump announced new sanctions against the reckless regime, that will hit them where it hurts. And that, of course, involves money. The newest sanctions target eight North Korean banks, and 26 North Korean nationals operating out of China, Russia. Libya and the United Arab Emirates. Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin said the sanctions are designed to fully isolate North Korea, in an effort to achieve our broader objectives of a peaceful and denuclearized Korean peninsula. This is further evidence that our president does not want a nuclear war, and that he continues his efforts to reach a diplomatic solution. The MSM wants to act like Trump is a madman, bent on nuclear war, but nothing could be further from the truth. At the same time, he is fully ready to take Kim Jong-un on, militarily, if he fails to heed Trump's warnings. If you are proud of how Trump is handling the North Korea situation, please share this everywhere and comment I support our president. H. T. The Hill Ben Carson just revealed what he thinks about NFL protests and it instantly went viral. Many people have reacted to the national anthem's protests. Secretary of Housing and Urban Development and former presidential candidate Ben Carson made a statement on the issue today. He followed up the comments from President Trump in Alabama. Trump said during the rally that he'd love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag to say get that son of a beat dash dash off the field right now. Out. He's fired. He's fired. Ben Carson said on his Facebook that NFL Sundays used to be fun to watch and that has all changed since the protests. He wrote. Here we are at another NFL Sunday. That used to represent a time of fun, games and unity. I hope we can return to that situation soon. He then continued by saying that even though everyone has a right to express themselves, there is a time and place for everything. 
Last week I saw a story about pre-adolescent players being drawn into the take a knee protests. Does anyone honestly believe that encouraging even our youth to believe they are victims of our society will actually help us come together? He didn't let up, we would encourage them and all Americans to utilize their influence to truly draw people together and not be manipulated into doing the opposite under the guise of unity. Share this if you agree with Ben Carson 100% and wish that the NFL would get back to playing games and not protesting. Thanks for reading. After Cowboys took a knee last night, Trump just came out and slaughtered them. President Trump called on the NFL on Tuesday to change its own rules on kneeling during the national anthem. He then blasted the Dallas Cowboys during the protest during Monday Night Football. The NFL has all sorts of rules and regulations. The only way out for them is to set a rule that you can't kneel during our national anthem, Trump said. This is why you don't mess with Trump. He hits back hard. He then referred to the booing that the Cowboys got. The booing at the NFL football game last night, when the entire Dallas team dropped to its knees, was loudest I have ever heard. Great anger, the president tweeted. 